Allow me to, to speak to you briefly on Christ and the Catholic priesthood. And let me begin by reading a passage from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. St. John writes, Truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are, th are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's from John chapter 10 verses 1 to 10. As I said, I would like to speak on Christ and the Catholic priesthood. The gospel passage that I've just read is drawn from the 10th chapter of St. John's Gospel, in which our Lord makes stupendous claims, the greatest of which is that he is one in being with the Father and is therefore God. He also speaks of himself in that chapter as the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for all his sheep. In our passage that I've just read, our Lord, our Lord uses a slightly different image. He tells the Jews that he is the gate of the sheepfold and that God's shepherds must pass through him in all their dealings with the sheep. He is speaking especially here to the Pharisees who claim a special authority to guide God's sheep to pasture. But they are opposed to Jesus and with the leaders gradually become implacably hostile to his teaching and ministry to the people of God. They refuse to acknowledge him as the gate of God's sheepfold through which all shepherds must pass. In fact, they come to utterly reject him. Our Lord gives a solemn warning. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He goes on to say that the one who refuses to accept him as the one and only gate to the sheep, but attempts to enter or to lead the sheep to pasture through some other gate, is a thief and a robber. So then, our Lord is speaking both of himself and of the shepherds of the sheep. In the letter to the Hebrews, our Lord is presented as our one high priest through whom we attain the Father. And our Lord himself told his disciples that no one can come to the Father except through him. He is the way to the Father and in him resides the full truth and all the life of the Father. He who sees him sees the Father. The Father and I are one, he tells the Jews later in this very chapter. So then, all who tend God's sheep his chosen flock, must do so in and through him. Incidentally, in our own day, when there has been a laudable growth in interest and appreciation of the various religions of man, there is the danger of thinking that other gates may be chosen to reach eternal life. That should not be the attitude of the Christian. As our Lord says in the Gospel I've read, 
and as the church constantly testifies down the ages, it is He, Christ, who brings this abundant life from God. He is the only gate, the only gate to heaven and to God. If others reach heaven, then even if they are unaware of it, they have passed through the only gate, which is Christ. He is the means whereby they reached heaven. And Christ also speaks in the passage I read of the shepherds of the flock. Well then, who in the plan of God are the shepherds of the flock appointed to lead the sheep to the abundant pasture that is Christ himself? We remember how when the risen Jesus met the apostles on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he spoke to Simon. Do you love me? he asked. Yes. Then feed my sheep. Three times our Lord asked the question, and three times he entrusted Peter with the care of his lambs, his flock. He was giving to Peter and his successors the primacy of care over his flock, and essential to the success of this care was a personal love for Christ. Christ was the gate through which his ordained pastors must constantly pass. The shepherds appointed by God are those among Christ's flock who are ordained to the ministerial priesthood of which Peter and the apostles were the first. They were the first of Christ's priests. Love for Jesus must distinguish their pastoral service and their whole life. Of course, all the baptized share by grace in the life of Christ. All the baptized faithful then share in his one priesthood in the ordinary sense of being called to offer to the Father in union with Christ the sacrifices of their prayers, their work and their life. By these continual spiritual sacrifices offered in union with the one high priest, especially at Mass, during the celebration of the Eucharist, they make the Church and the world more acceptable to God. In this way, the entire Church is engaged in a vast priestly activity on behalf of the world. But the ordinary member of Christ's faithful, having what might be called this common share in Christ's priesthood, is not a designated, ordained shepherd of God's flock as such. The shepherd of Christ's flock is the ordained priest, the one who has received the sacrament of holy orders, empowering him with the gifts of the Spirit to lead the flock of Christ to pasture. And of course, that pasture is Christ himself. His share in Christ's priesthood is of an essentially different kind to that of the lay faithful. He acts in Christ's person in offering the sacrifice of the Mass, in forgiving sins, in anointing the sick, in confirming the baptized, in preaching God's word and administering the sacraments. And all of this he does precisely as pastor, shepherd. In short, his task is to feed the flock of God with Christ himself. By the power of the sacrament of holy orders, he makes present in his person and activity Jesus himself the Good Shepherd, and one High Priest. In all his dealings with God and mankind, the ordained Catholic priest must constantly pass through the one gate which is Christ. He may never pass through another gate or preach another Christ, another message, nor sound a different trumpet from that of the Church gathered around the chief pastor, the successor of Simon Peter, to whom Christ entrusted all his lambs, all his sheep, his entire flock. For this reason, Christ's faithful 
love the ordained priesthood because they know that through it they are led to Christ the Good Shepherd and to his pasture. If any Catholic boy or young man is watching this, I assure you that a vocation to the priesthood, to the ordained Catholic priesthood, is among God's greatest gifts.